Go. Okay, uh, the Climate Policy Centre. Oh, well, first of all, could you tell us your name and, and sure. the, the organization you're from? Yeah, I'm Rafe Pomerantz with the Climate Policy Center of Clean Air, Cool Planet. I am uh, based in Washington, D.C. We're a U.S. NGO devoted to trying to solve the climate problem. Right, and how close are you to solving the climate problem? Well, we have actually think we've made a pretty good uh, contribution over the long run. For example, uh, one critical element of solving the climate problem is transformational energy technology. And in the U.S., we've recently set up a new entity called ARPA-E, Advanced Research Projects Administration Energy. It's devoted solely to supporting transformational energy projects, major leaps. That's a critical pillar of climate policy. And so this was established in the last two years in the U.S. government. It's a model on the uh, Pentagon's uh, advanced research projects uh, research, and we're hoping that this will bring about real jumps in technology. That's a piece, that's part of the solution, and it's a recent development. Right. And what's the, what's the message you're trying to bring here to Cancun? Oh, well, the message is clearly urgency. In some ways, I think the story is offshore. There's a massive coral bleaching episode going on in the Caribbean and actually globally here now because, oh, here and globally, and the uh, uh, coral bleaching is a phenomenon of a warming oceans. The oceans are too hot, the temperatures exceed the limits of coral, and like 2005, 2010 is a disaster for coral in the Caribbean, and it's a message that everybody needs to know. This is one of the major events of early climate changes with the devastation of reefs on a global basis, and it's not here in the Yucatan this year, but it is uh, in various regions in the Caribbean. So I, I think delegates, NGOs, press can all take a message from actually what's happening in this near uh, marine region. I mean, it strikes me that there's not a problem in getting the message home to people in this uh, this, this part of the building. Correct. Most people are agreeing that there is a huge yeah. problem and right. we're beginning to understand the extent of the problem. Right. Uh, but the people who make the decisions, uh, are they getting the message? Well, I think we, we in the United States have a long road to go. We have not convinced the American people yet to support major transformation of our energy systems. Uh, to invest the capital, set up the policies to do that. There are entrenched interests. There's a lack of knowledge. Uh, there's a lot of education and political organizing to do. Uh, so I think we have a big task. I would agree with you that uh, one thing we know is diplomacy, in a way, has to follow domestic politics on this issue because the change that has to take place is very much in the U.S. a domestic decision. The diplomacy can help to have balanced uh, commitments globally as our delegation here is trying to achieve, but the big test is at home on a political basis. And at the grass, grassroots level in the U.S., yeah. is the message getting home there? Well, I think yes and no. Yes, there's a huge amount of activity on this issue at the grassroots level in the United States. State governments are acting, local governments are acting, huge amount of citizen engagement. But that has not been translated yet, in a political sense, into enough power to change energy policy on the scale it must be changed in the United States. We saw that in the last Congress. Uh, the President initiated a, a major policy uh, proposal. Uh, for various reasons, it died in the U.S. Congress. And that just, this problem requires an immense amount of U U.S. leadership. We have provided that or participated in a number of areas on this issue. But one fundamental one, which has got to do with the pricing of carbon and uh, putting in place a, a nationally efficient system of reductions we haven't been able to achieve yet. Um, given the extent of the problem, uh, which is, as we right. agreed, is, is being recognized yeah. on a massive scale, right. um, how quickly do we, have to do, how quickly do we have to work to convince those policy makers? Uh, we have really, there, there is no time left in the system. It's already, I've spent 30 years on this problem. Phase one was theory. Phase two is the temperature record. The ob in the late 80s, we saw the temperature record show the warming. Phase three is we now see massive changes in the world. The most disturbing, one is in the tropics here with the coral. Another is at the pole because the polar ice sheets are shrinking. We know that now, Greenland and Antarctica. 
and the estimates of sea level rise have now gone from what the IPCC asserted like 30 centimeters in a century to a meter or more. So we're in a dramatic situation. We've actually committed the planet to a significant amount of warming, so there's no time left. It's just a matter of trying to cut the problem off as early as possible and deal with those consequences. What's the, what's the very least you would like to see at the end of next week? Well, a couple of things. What I would like to see is a, 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 a clearer, a sort of a second stage of the Copenhagen Accord where some of the elements are, are made more uh, specific, that there is a wider acceptance of it, more participation. I think it's a, it provides a basis for an excellent uh, process going forward is highly flexible. It doesn't require mammoth, decade-long negotiations to try to find legally binding agreement. Countries and the world can move very quickly. The second thing I'd like to see, and this is a, my organization and a number of others here, are working on trying to focus some additional attention as part of the overall solution to what are called short-lived forces, and in particular methane on a global basis uh, HFCs and where appropriate black carbon and we started this process a year and a half ago uh, in the Arctic Council at a ministerial meeting they set up a task force on this because the Arctic platform is essential here the Arctic you know the Arctic is coming apart the sea ice the glaciers the ice sheets and now we know that warm water is penetrating the Arctic glaciers this is a really serious problem so there's a lot of urgency there and it's an important political platform. So this, the thing you have to do is to get at these short-lived forces so you can reduce the rate of climate forcing very quickly. And with a big enough effort on methane, which is a very powerful greenhouse gas, you can actually make a difference pretty quickly. It doesn't mean you don't do everything you have to do on carbon. It's really an acceleration of what we already think is necessary. And we, we think that, for, that the U.S., Canada, Mexico are already talking about an initiative in this area. We hope there's some form of declaration and increased the momentum building on what the Arctic has done, what U.S. and Mexico did a month or two ago with the Global Methane Initiative, what happened in uh, Bangkok on HFCs a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that's another, so those are two pieces. The third is finance, uh, to make uh, progress in the initial finance issue. But from our perspective, we're focused on um, number one, Copenhagen Accord. Number two, uh, this initiative on short-lived forces. Okay, that's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.